Th this is my library. Travel. The Durrells and so on, Corporal. It's about everything. I have my Irish passport and I'm proud of it. But my dad was Irish and his lot were Irish. And we have got here history of Ireland and the history of Michael Collins. That's important. Stuff like this I read and therefore I know something about Ireland, the facts. Then I forget them probably. Erskine Childers. Now there's a man you know. My daddy was a friend of Erskine's. But Erskine was a famous sailor. There were three famous Irish yachtsmen. Erskine, Connor O'Brien, and Otway Waller. And that is the reason, really, why he's so well known. There you are, that's an inch. Joshua Slocum, he sailed, he was the first to sail around the Horn, around the world, and Dr. Slocum, I suppose that's in 1890, I'm going to guess, 1895, his journey around the world, and my father, because he designed the, the uh, self-steering to run before the wind, went around from west to east. Joshua, I'm sure, went from east to west. M much more interesting. I feel very strongly that 700 years of British rule in Ireland and around the world was a mixed blessing, and the trouble at the end Ireland, Britain did not want to let Ireland go because they said if Ireland went, India would go. And that is one of the reasons why a hundred years ago they sent out the Black and Tans and they did more damage for the British because many of the Irish lads were over fighting in the First World War and then what happened, they sent the Black and Tans and the Irish population turned against these thugs and they burnt down my father's house. Actually, it was, in, uh, it was on the Shannon in, in East Galway, yeah, opposite Banaha. The rest of the family are in Tipperary. So, uh, wonderful. What a life we live. I was in love with a beautiful Danish girl. Here we go. Isn't that a sight to see? In Denmark, right at the north of Jutland, there's a little place called Skagen, S-K-A-G-E-N. Brits call it Skagen. We went there every single summer when we were courting, and we went there every single summer when we were married. And there was a wonderful artist there who did landscapes, uh, seascape. And we bought that painting just before he died. Axel Lind. Axel Lind. He's famous for his seascapes. He does nothing but seascapes. He doesn't do people or landscapes. No, that's true. These are my mother's paintings. She was a, a portrait painter. Where she was at the Slade. And that's, by the way, Sir Vivian Dunn. Sir Vivian Dunn, who was her boyfriend. I'm allowed to say that because they're all long gone. And here are her other paintings. She even did beautiful naked ladies. Not that I understand these things. She was well taught, I think. Clever lady. I love her for many reasons, but the main is she took me to every golf competition in Kent. Every single boys' competition for every summer, and that was wonderful. So golf was my my love. How boring, no? Ha ha. <laughs> and more lovely ladies. Muriel Margaret Waller of Folkestone Art School, and it was very good. And then she did the unforgettable, I told you that. She took a painting of Sandra Howard, the white 
the wife of uh, Michael Howard, the Member of Parliament, and I didn't speak to her for at least five minutes. How dare she do that? I am not a Conservative. The grandchildren had self-isolated and therefore came round the back way. And I'll lead you into the garden. I want you to smell, to look, and to love. Smell from this wonderful jasmine. And I'll now take you down here to the fuchsia, which is all the way from Connemara. Well, this uh, we bought in Connemara, where we used to go alternate years. We brought this back as a memory. Like most things in the garden are memories. My father's family, uh, my father's grandfather founded the Maltings in Banahar. Their house was on the Shannon. My father went to war and when he came back, uh, his English wife, this is the first wife, she had bought the house next door, which was... It was, a, it, was a, it was a beautiful house, but not as good as the, my beautiful old family house. And so really we say Galway, but we are uh, on the River Shannon. We go this way, and I'm going to stop here. I mentioned the smell, and above here is jasmine. And the jasmine reminds us of Corfu, we have a way down to the beach, which is a jasmine hedge. It is the most magical smell, and we sit here for our 11 o'clock coffee every day and maybe dream of our Corfu. We found the wonderful clematis here, which was originally here, where well, my wife planted it, and we will bring it back onto the trellis here next year. For four months I've been clearing the ivy off this fence the whole way down the north side of the garden and this is all that is left. The viburnum was huge which is I cut down from it was about 12 feet high. So we're going to replace the viburnum by four extra camellias. We have one already, which is beautiful in the early part of the season. And then this is the hydrangea bed. The whole of this area was ivy, brambles. Even the weeds couldn't live here. And so I had to dig the hole and clear it. There is a watering system around the garden. And here you will see the plants down there. Each hydrangea has its personal water. These two plants, which we'll be moving, will have their own water already. On the other side, nestling beside the Irish fuchsia, is the honeysuckle. And then over here, we have a purple uh, clematis and a red rose. And these have lasted all summer and are part of this wonderful display. We were on a cruise around South America. Oh, Our South last... America was absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Except the last country in the north, Colombia, wouldn't let us in. So we stopped at Aruba, which is a lovely Caribbean island. In Miami, we wouldn't let anybody off, other than the Americans. Him. We wouldn't allow any Americans on. And we got a day's business in Miami done in a few hours. And then, like the best of the Irish, he said, we're going home. And he put his foot down. And we got home two days early, on March the 26th. So we read down the bed at the bottom of the garden. 
and uh, I spent ages clearing it first. But then the weather was okay. Six years ago, we went on our first world cruise, uh, Japan and China, and then the garden slowly went down. <laughs> and when we got back, we decided to restore it. Except one day I, I was sitting in a chair, do, I do the weeding in a chair, and uh, one of the legs of the chair fell down a hole, and so I fell off the chair, <laughs> and I couldn't get up. And so John had to come, and our grandson had to come and haul me off, off the weeds. Yeah. <laughs> Yanni, by the way, has a new, a new, so Yanni has a new knee. So uh, she's, I do the digging and she makes sure I dig the brambles up. I can't dig and I can't kneel, but I can do everything else. It's very strong. Mm -hmm. Now it's just the other knee. <laughs> In 1982, we bought the house from the founder of the uh, society, which was for meditation, a very famous man, a doctor, who has uh, dealt with oriental medicine. And when we bought it, it was derelict, and the garden was a jungle. But in the jungle, there was an old man meditating. We could not disturb him. Obviously, he was meditating. Yeah. And we walked down the lawn, and he was sitting in the bushes. <laughs> and so maybe one day, when I, another 10 years, I'm 80 now, in another 10 years I'll start meditating as well. <clears throat> this spot, I think, is the most beautiful in the garden. It has a view of the Thames, peace. I think of peace and how lucky I am to have this garden, lovely wife, and it's just tranquility and that's important at our life, our time of life. We'll get over this, terrible problems, and I hope we all live and we go on a long time, we're long livers in our family. If you had been here in May, you would have seen this arch with the rose and the clematis flowering above it. So beautiful. When we got back from the cruise for our lockdown, not only do we have a lockdown, but we had a blowdown because our greenhouse had been blown down in the winter. We then got a new one, and this is a very special one because it's made of glass, it's very strong. And I think the tomatoes and the cucumbers like it. This is not only a greenhouse, because when it rains, we sit on these chairs and it becomes a tea house, like the Chinese and the Japanese have tea houses. And we can sit and we can watch the birds and watch the pond and they don't know we're here. This is the first time we've grown vegetables. Here is the success, wonderful French beans. Behind it is a bluebell bed. In the spring it is blue and beautiful and so we planted everything in pots. And here is the disaster. We have peas, snap peas and mange too. Well, only a handful. That's all from all our plants. The first thing that Yanni did when she started her weeding was on our soft fruit bed. And we've had a lot, but not so much, of uh, blueberries, black currants, red currants, gooseberries, strawberries, blackberries, raspberries, and apples. And only the apples 
are there to be eaten now. This is one of the two treasures in the garden, the Japanese Asa. It has been here since the war, for 75 years, and has grown now, and it is getting near its old age. Opposite here is where Yanni and I sit in the afternoon and look at this beautiful tree and dream of all the good times they're going to be. This was always Yanni's flower bed. But over the years, it was overgrown by bramble, ivy, weeds. We've now made a walk so people can see them. And we have got in here so many, many new flowers to enhance the old ones. And again, another future. China. They have stepping stones. And in Japan, they have pebbles, little pebbles and big pebbles. And we have both. Now come up to the summer house, which was paid for by my Irish cousin. It's a summer house now, but in winter, we will treat it as a summer house. The grandchildren have been here, the boxing gloves, the fishing rod, and this is where they keep distant from us and have their friends. We go to the river, excuse me, Yanni, and here, for most people, this is the treasure. Our garden is even more of a treasure. People are swimming, they have their boats. A lot of them have these sort of surfboards which they paddle. When there's nobody there, it's just peace. Just sit and look at it. Look at water, it's lovely. I was walking down the street in Cambridge with a friend who was actually John Cleese's best friend. And he said, I've got a girl for you, John. I said, tell me more. And he said, she's Danish. I said, Danish, Dutch, they're all the same to me. And she's a redhead. I said, oh my God, I'm in love. That's how I fell in love. And I went and saw her. And then I asked her, I hitchhiked to Denmark. And the first thing I did when I arrived, I said, will you marry me? And she said, no. After 50 times, well, maybe not quite as many, I took her to a shop at Folkestone. And I said, this is where my brothers got their wedding ring. Are you coming in last time? And she said, yes. <laughs> Good. Oh, God. Now, when I first met him, it was in the sitting room of the house where I was living with five other European girls and I thought he was awful, boastful. He just kept talking over everybody and I thought, my God, what an awful chap. And then he kept asking me out for tea. That was the thing you did in those days, you asked people out to tea. Crumpets and tea. Yeah. God. Now we're going to the other side of the garden. We're going along here where the bamboo is, which is of course very Chinese again. And we come to our punt. And my first book was going to be Three Men in a Punt. And this is taken out. And we go down the steps and I bring it up myself when it is high tide. We 
they can punt it. And in fact, we made four short films, and this became the Viking Longship, because the Vikings went to Croydon in 871, and only we knew about it, and the historians now know about it. And that was the Longship. So we'll continue. And what is this? This is the root of a pine tree, a huge pine tree which fell in the river. No, it's not only a, a root. I'm going to be a sculptor. On the top there will be a Japanese stupa, a peace pagoda. Yanni wants a waterfall to come down the mountain and I will carve steps and paths all the way down. Behind is the result of all our efforts. It used to be incredibly high, so we put all the stuff we cut, which we can't send to the council, in here. We go on, but we should now walk past the Cedar of Lebanon, which is one of the biggest around. And now we should continue up the garden, past all the logs that have been cut. The left-hand side of the path is the azalea bed. And in April, the whole length to the house, azaleas of every single color, all fed by my watering system. <coughs> And now we come to the second wonder of the garden and our greatest pleasure, the pond. Yanni cleared the whole area around the pond and then I laid pool liner and on top pebbles. And in, in Japan they see pebbles like this as a beach. Now I want to go to where we sit and the butterflies, the bees and the birds ignore us and they come to the water and they nest in the bushes and we have seen so many in the months past. Above us is a rose. Originally the rose was invaded by the neighbour's rose and we couldn't even get in here because the whole lot fell down but then I managed to somehow get it all back and there now our rose is flowering again and it was a wonderful smell. And then in the distance the Japanese Acer and the greenhouse. We see the little Chinese bridge with the tortoise and who do we have living on the pond or beside the pond but the Buddha. And we built a little rock mountain for the Buddha because we were in love with Chinese and Japanese. And there is the treasure of this house, the wisteria. It's probably over a hundred years old and has actually covered the whole of the balcony there. The house was built in 1820 and it was only much smaller but extended. The exciting thing is that where the wisteria is is a foxhole and the fox family lives in the west area and we see them very occasionally mum dad and three little cubs and this has been the story of our lockdown garden so far <laughs>